welcome to the seventh annual, uh, sixth seven, seven. one of the annual ebook uh, <laughs> summit. Um, before we get started today, um, I'd like to acknowledge that we are meeting today on the traditional territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh peoples. And um, let's get started. I uh, hope everyone's super excited about this afternoon. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're uh, going to look at some talks at the beginning. We've got the topics right up there. We'll have a bit of a break, and then we're going to have some uh, group breakout sessions at the um, end where we'll discuss, share back, and then do a bit more talking. So um, I'll, we'll sort of work out how that's going to happen uh, during the break and just after. But I uh, get to get us started off. Um, by talking about the state of ebooks. Now, our absent chair of the Co op's BC licensing function uh, group uh, is doing intros, uh, arranged intros with fun facts uh, about people from all speakers. Uh, so, for example, should I be introducing myself? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Sarah Pilkar, acting to show experience coordinator for the West Vancouver Memorial Library. Uh, and uh, when you visit the West Van Library, you are greeted at the front entrance by Mr. and Mrs. Plumtree, a pair of carved figures holding books who have been part of the library since 1977 when they were created as a part of the wood sculpture of the American Symposium. So every speaker today will have a little fun fact either about themselves or their library, which I think is a lot of fun, and uh, hopefully you think that's interesting as well. If not, we can complain to Jay. Uh, and, you know, he wasn't here, so he won't know what <laughs> Anyway, so I have about 20 minutes uh, to talk about the state of ebooks. And for any of you that have uh, chatted with me about ebooks before, you know that I can talk about them for several hours. Uh, so I am going to do my very, very best to just squeeze some of the core things from the past year, um, both sort of provincial, uh, in the country, and sort of some interesting things that are happening in the sort of marketplace at large, which we should be paying attention to. And we do have a microphone, but I don't know if it's picking up my voice at all. Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna start off with some, what is happening in BC? So with the provincial stats, we don't have the 2016 ones published yet, so these are pulled from the 2015 uh, statistics, uh, which is kind of neat uh, because Things are trending upwards, so we can know that more than 3.3 uh, million ebooks were circulated in 2015. And we look at a per capita um, sort of breakdown of that. That's the equivalent of three and four British Columbians checking out an ebook. And libraries did see an average of a 25% increase in circulation. It varied widely um, on there. It's a beautiful sort of thing to look at when you go to the open data and squash that column of data. Uh, for small libraries, so those serving a population of under um, 10,000, that was an average of 34% increase. Medium libraries between 10 and 100,000 saw 14. And the large libraries, those serving um, 100,000 or more, um, so about a 12% increase. I was able to uh, make a couple people grab some stats for me uh, for their 2016 uh, to let me know sort of what's changed. And I did sneak on to the Surrey Library Strategic um, Report uh, for the year because they said that they saw a 24% increase in uh, circulation last year, 2016. Vancouver saw a 20% increase, Port Moody uh, 23, and our library at West Bend saw about a 9% increase. So libraries are continuing for the most part, to see an increase in ebook circulation. What's really up are the audiobooks, uh, which I think I see a lot of nodding heads around there. Audiobooks are big, guys. Uh, it's really amazing. I'm going to talk a bit about them more in a slide. Um, but like we saw a 27% increase in audiobook circulation, Port Moody 32, and Vancouver Public saw 57% increase in audiobook circulation. That's kind of mind blowing. Um, that's really, really interesting, and I'm sure your libraries, uh, from, you know, from one of those three, you saw something similar to that. So it's just something to keep in mind for that greater marketplace um, and where we sort of center ourselves in there. So, so 
So then the next part, um, this is kind of tiny. I super apologize, but I can't move the projector any further back without running into Dean and Natalie's table and spilling water all over both of them. So um, I'm going to talk a bit more with the words on here uh, than I might otherwise. And so the Association of Audiobook Publishers uh, just released a report fairly recently, um, and they were saying they saw an increase of 34% in audiobooks sold last year. And then they talked about sort of a listener survey. And I thought that was kind of cool because I like to know why people are doing what they're doing. And um, you saw things like 27% indicated that the library was a place where they did audiobook discovery. It's kind of neat. That's a fairly big number. So you might think, why? Could it be that it's really hard to find audiobooks <laughs> um, at, like, say, Chapters or Indigo or other places? And unless you're willing to get, like, an Audible subscription, you know, where are you doing your discovery? 57% uh, listen at home, 32% listen on the road. And I like this, 48% of the listeners were under 35. So that's really, really interesting. Um, and then to no surprise, I'm sure to anyone, the most popular genres were our mystery, thriller, suspense, our sci-fi fantasy, and our romance, which is the same thing that we see with the ebook uh, genre population. So, audiobooks. The other big thing, uh, other than audiobooks in the last little while, has been sort of the subscription ebook um, services. And just a quick room survey: Does anyone subscribe to say a sub ebook subscription service that isn't their library, like a personal one? Okay. It's you know we're kind of alone as library folk because uh, a lot of people are subscribing to it and does. Uh, I've got some beautiful charts for you later, and you can see some of the, the ways that people are getting their ebooks. Uh, Scribd is an ebook service um, that is saying that it's got over 500,000 subscribers, um, and they've just added, in addition to audiobooks um, and ebooks, is some new stuff. What's weird about the news thing is, unlike our services, they're picking and choosing articles from their publications that they're sharing with their subscribers. So it's not like you're going to get the entire um, Wall Street Journal. Wall Street Journal will say from this edition, we're going to give script subscribers these five articles from it. Strange, but apparently it works for them. Um, we did see as ebook subscription service fold last year, which was Oyster. Um, and the only other one that's really out there at this point in time is Kindle Unlimited. Is anyone here familiar with the Fascinating uh, service that is Kindle Unlimited. Excellent. I didn't copy and paste all this for uh, no reason. Um, so it is the biggest player across all countries with ebook subscription services. Um, one of the interesting things about it is that both with Scribd and with uh, Kindle Unlimited, these aren't pro the books you get aren't big publisher books. These are self-published. They're indie authors. They're sometimes very small. Um, publishing houses that are putting their books on these because the big uh, big publishing houses are like we don't need this extra thing we'd rather make more money uh, so you do see a lot of small authors and the way Kindle Unlimited works is um, two interesting things one you basically get paid by the page out of a pool of money so last month they had a pool of just over 19 million so that got split up for like, okay, out of that 19 million, there were say 40 billion pages read, yours was this percentage of that, so you're gonna make, you know, $20. Um, apparently it works, and one of the reasons that it seems to be working is that for authors to participate in this, they often have to have an exclusivity contract with Kindle. So they're saying, we're not gonna distribute our books on any other platforms other than Amazon's. So already, you know, I'm sure some of you had self-published authors say, my book's on Amazon, can you put it in the library ebook universe? And everyone's like, eh, guys, sorry. Um, but Kindle Unlimited does, is super, like, strict with their terms of service around this. And um, a lot of authors have said, well, I know I'm going to get at least this much per month out of Kindle Unlimited, so why would I bother spreading myself out to other audiences that aren't using Kindle or Kindle Unlimited? So it's something to keep an eye on, something to think about where people are finding things and, you know, the ease of you're paying 
you know, 10 bucks a month, and you're just going to have all the romance, thrillers, mysteries, those big genres that you want. Okay. Has anyone read any articles recently about ebook sales declining? Yeah. They're everywhere. It's really great. Um, I just took a couple of clips from the news, you know, as ebook sales decline, digital fatigue grows, you know, the bad news about ebooks. The Guardian loves to publish uh, articles about <laughs> ebooks dying um, because I, I don't know those Brits. Um, you know, uh, kids hate ebooks. Um, this one was really funny. It was like how ebooks lost their shine. Uh, and it was the entirety of the article was like, the reason why ebook sales are declining is that you don't get to show off the book covers on your coffee table or on your bookshelf. <laughs> so no one knows what you've been reading. Um, something. The, sort of the vanity of, of buying uh, things. It was, <laughs> I love The Guardian. Um, but we are uh, seeing that, yeah, there's some interesting things when you're looking at the numbers. And most of these articles will get things from the Association of American Book Publishers, which uh, gathers information from the big publishers primarily, and some of the smaller ones, but definitely no information from self-published indie author books at all. So they're basically pretending that market segment doesn't exist, which, you know, if you're saying that there's, you know, a pool of over 19 million a month for Kindle Unlimited authors, you know, are ebook sales really declining? <clears throat> um, you are seeing uh, something called agency pricing having an impact on ebook sales. This is when the publisher says to Kobo or Amazon, you're selling this book for $19.99. No, you cannot allow coupons to be applied to this ebook. No, you cannot put it as a sale item on this ebook. It is a flat price. You cannot change it. So this is very different than the book market because, you know, a lot of us will go to a used bookstore or go to chapters on that $5 table of books that they just can't seem to offload. This is agency pricing is when they're saying, you know what, I'm not letting you guys play with the price of my book. And uh, there are a couple uh, places that are talking about, you know, the other half of the story, which is our, our self-published friends. Um, the LA Times recently talked about, you know, uh, there was a speed bump. Part of that is that control over pricing and keeping the prices quite high. Um, and uh, what else do I have in here? You know, the big news places, except for this one article I found in the last four months, uh, have basically said, you know, ebooks aren't working. But there are places, if you sort of dig a little deeper, that give you a different story. So the next few slides, um, for those of you that like charts, I love charts, um, are going to be really happy. If not, just close your eyes, listen to my voice, and I'll try and explain it. I've got uh, two reports that have come out fairly recently about um, book sales internationally, and one that's specifically about the Canadian ebook market. This first one is the author earnings report. This is run by a guy known as the data guy. Uh, his name isn't really published anywhere, and he sort of scrapes the big uh, sales places, Amazon, uh, iBooks, Kobo, Barnes & Noble, and takes a whole bunch of data, over 700,000 pieces of data, and says, this is where the sales are happening. This is how, you know, the market's changing. we got to look a bit deeper than what sort of the Association of American uh, Publishers is telling us. So the most recent uh, report he put out was in February, and it was the big, bad, wide, and international report um, where they broke apart not just sales across platforms, but also looked at the um, top five English language book markets, so uh, the US, UK, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. And it was kind of interesting. There were some neat things. Um, the primary findings, so the, you know, you pay attention to nothing else. Untracked non-traditional suppliers uh, make up a high percentage of ebook sales in English-speaking non-US markets. What we see up here in our little Canada thing is that 
large and small medium publishers do make up about 62% uh, of our annual sales, which is different than both the US and the UK. They see 57% um, in the UK are sales from large or small medium publishers and 44 in the US. Um, in the small chart in the corner there that I've highlighted um, is that ebooks as a percentage of all book sales, when you're looking at that sort of annual units sold, is 34%. So that doesn't jive quite with all the um, other things that we're looking at. Here's another pie chart. This pie chart sucks because Canada's tiny. So I blew it up. Um, New Zealand's even tinier. It's unreadable. And the report was set up that even this is a little bit blurry, so I will talk about it. So they sort of broke down in Canada with the amount that is spent per year. You know, where are people buying their books? And despite Kobo being our little Canadian friend, Amazon is still a huge part of the pie. It's not nearly as big as it is in the U.S., where it's 83% of the market, or in the UK where it's 87% of the market, it's still 52%. Kobo's 27. Um, Apple iBooks is 17% of the sales. There's a tiny piece that is other, 2.1, and the little red slice of 1.6% is Google Books. So um, a lot of people in Canada are getting their books from Amazon, which makes sense because they sell that Kindle, that Kindle, you know, itself as the place to get all of its ebooks. The other um, report that I found recently was um, BookNet Canada. Is anyone familiar with the BookNet Canada crowd? I see a couple nods. It's they're kind of cool. Um, they do an annual report called the State of Digital Publishing in Canada, which is super helpful. And uh, they're a nonprofit organization that develops technology standards and education to serve the Canadian book industry. It was founded in 2002. And uh, it, you know, they're everyone. They are saying that their groups are publishing companies, booksellers, wholesalers, distributors, sales agents, industry associations, literary agents, the media, and libraries across the country. And in fact, their current um, chair of their board is from, works at Toronto Libraries. So. Libraries are a big part of BookNet Canada, so there are some interesting data points that we'll look at in another slide on there. Also, I really like the colors that they put in their report. It's, it's quite calming. It's a very nice palette. Uh, so what we see here uh, is something fairly interesting, is that in 2016, ebooks with no sales, which I don't know why they had the same data displayed twice, but each their own, uh, we're 46%, and they said they think that's because more and more publishers are releasing their backlist of titles as ebooks, and that backlist, you know, might not get sales unless someone discovers that author. So they didn't seem particularly worried about this. It's just like there's a lot more books available in Canada, available digitally. So that means there's going to be more books with few or no sales. And they also looked at the channels. So um, since they were sort of talking to publishers in here, for the most part, is like, how are you selling your books to Canadian readers? Um, you know, 100% finally in 2016 said that they were doing it through the ebook retailers. Only about 46% are doing a direct sales through their website. There's wholesale and then subscription services in Canada. Only about 27% of these Canadian publishers are making them available through, say, Script or Amazon Unlimited, which is kind of interesting. So our Canadian subscribers to Amazon Unlimited um, or Kindle Unlimited might not be getting some CanCon in there. They might not be discovering Canadian authors, which you know might have some other things to think about in there. And they also did that retailer uh, thing. There's a lot of data points. I cut out a whole bunch so it didn't look as terrible on the slide. Uh, there's some great skills uh, to put this together for you guys. Um, you do see that, uh, you know, 96% are using Kobo, 93% Amazon. Um, they didn't include Cloud Library on here, so I don't know if it's because it's fairly new, but 73% um, of the people surveyed, the organization surveyed, did say they're distributing through Overdrive. Um, so you can see where people are spreading their attention through there. 
that's a lot. That's sort of the snapshot of Canadian uh, sort of publish ebook publishing in there. What's happening in Canada? It's a lot to cover. There's a lot that happens every month that changes, and I'm just going to plug super quick because I think I'm mostly on time given our late start. Uh, is that I do uh, send out a monthly uh, ebook and e-reader news little blurb where I summarize some articles, get rid of the chaff, um, and try and give you guys the best stuff out there. And if you do, um, if you're not already on it, there's a bunch of you that are, uh, just shoot me an email and I'll add you to that list. Because um, it is interesting when you start looking at the big picture, sort of the trends that you start to see emerging. There was a huge chunk of this presentation I had to cut out for uh, length which was talking about some of the interesting things um, around DRM, uh, social DRM, and the things that are changing in there. But that's a different conversation. And that's the state of the ebooks right now. So thank you, everyone.